This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Click the link in the description to take advantage of a special offer for Arvin Ash viewers. December is the month of the winter solstice. It's the point in the Earth's orbit when the northern hemisphere is tilted farthest away from the sun. It happens usually on December 21st or 22nd and is considered the first day of winter. Every other day gets longer until we reach the summer solstice, which happens on June 20th or 21st. This is when the northern hemisphere is tilted furthest towards the sun and is considered the first day of summer. Why do we have these solstices? As shown in this animation, it's because the Earth happens to have an axial tilt of about 23 and a half degrees. While this tilt is responsible for shaping our planet's climate and seasons, it also played a crucial role in shaping life on Earth. So you might ask, what would happen if the Earth had no tilt? Is it even normal for a planet to have a tilt? What caused it? You might be shocked at some of the implications for Earth and for us humans if there were no tilt. Let's take a look at what those implications would be. That's coming up right now. In case you didn't know, the Earth has an axial tilt on its orbit around the Sun, and this turns out to have a dramatic effect. It's the reason we have different seasons in the northern and southern hemispheres. You might ask, is it even normal for a planet to have a tilt? Well, it appears so. Most planets in our solar system have it. Mercury is the only one that has nearly no tilt at 2 degrees. The Earth's tilt is 23 and a half degrees. Why does the Earth have this tilt to begin with? The details are generally different for each planet. In the case of Earth, it's thought that early in the Earth's formation over 4 billion years ago, a planet roughly the size of Mars, which we now call Theia, crashed into Earth and knocked it off its kilter. In doing so, some of the material from the two planets was thrown off and began to orbit the Earth. And over time, this debris coalesced into the Moon. This impact also created a permanent tilt in Earth's rotation. Now, I should stress that this is a hypothesis. We don't have a lot of hard evidence other than computer simulations that seem to require such a collision to explain the Moon's present material's orbit and inclination. But this axial tilt has had a major influence in the history of Earth. If the Earth didn't have a tilt, that is, if its axis were perpendicular to its orbital plane, several significant changes would occur. The most noticeable change would be the absence of seasons as we know them. The tilt is responsible for the variation in the intensity and duration of sunlight at different latitudes throughout the year, which lead to the four seasons. Without the tilt, every location on Earth would receive a consistent amount of sunlight year-round and for about 12 hours every day. Because the Earth does have a tilt, it causes the Sun's rays to strike the northern and southern hemispheres at different angles during different times of the year, which makes the temperatures and precipitation rates fluctuate drastically depending on the season. So without this tilt, temperature and precipitation patterns would not vary much. It would still be warm in the equator and cold at the poles. Scientists think that Earth without this tilt would have stratified climate bands. These bands would get progressively colder as you moved away from the equator. Since humans might find life difficult in the continuous winter of higher latitudes, we probably would have congregated in the planet's midsection, where the climate would be more like the tropics. Earth's current tropical zones can serve as an example of what an Earth without seasons would be like in these non-tilting equatorial regions since most tropics have minimal temperature and day length variability during the year. I should mention that the weather would not be completely unchanging. There would be some change because the Earth's orbit around the Sun is elliptical. So it's about 3% closer to the Sun during some parts of the year. Ironically, currently the Earth is actually closer to the Sun during the winter season and farther away during the summer season. So this should tell you that the major impact on temperature is due to Earth's tilt and not the distance from the Sun. Our seasonal changes influence weather patterns, including the formation of storms and precipitation. Without the axial tilt, the dynamics of weather systems would be altered. And agriculture relies heavily on the weather and seasonal variations for planting and harvesting crops. A lack of seasons could have significant implications for agricultural practices. In fact, Plant evolution itself would be altered because seasons are an important factor in the behavior and growth of plants. And plants in turn affect how animals have evolved because it's a source of food. Many living things time their reproduction to the seasons. So for example, birds 
often lay their eggs so that the chicks hatch at the same time that ripe fruit is on the trees for them to eat. Some animals would not need to hibernate for winter or breeding seasons. Animal reproduction would essentially be random throughout the year. An untilted Earth's biosphere would be something that we might not even recognize today. Different species of animals and plants would likely have been successful back in the early Earth, and that would have led to completely different evolutionary paths. It's quite possible that intelligent apes, that is, we may not have evolved in such an environment. Perhaps some other intelligent species would be top dog instead of us. So the Earth's axial tilt would in turn affect biology and evolution, and certainly human culture, if humans even existed in such a world. The world would be very different, to say the least. But if humans did manage to evolve on such a planet, how would life be different for us? According to Don Atwood, an ecological anthropologist at McGill University in Montreal, humans would probably never have advanced past a state of living in small, scattered settlements, scrounging for survival, and often dying of horrific insect-borne diseases. Why would this be the case? According to Atwood, modern technology can be thought of as a byproduct of the development of new ways to keep warm. Cold weather promotes invention, he says. From the early days of civilization, where men and women huddled around a fire, the invention of stoves and furnaces helped to prevent death in the winter. During the 18th century, the discovery of coal to warm homes and power machines improved technology and overall health. It led to the steam engine and ultimately to the Industrial Revolution, which led to the comforts of modern technology we enjoy today. But I want to add that this correlation of cold with technological advancement is not well understood. But we do know that winter prevents the spread of deadly diseases all over the world. For example, harsh winter conditions kill off parasite and microscopic organisms. A hot and humid environment allows many pathogens to thrive. Some diseases that come from humid tropical environments include HIV and Ebola viruses. The spread of these diseases could prove catastrophic for humankind. But winter has been vital to humans in other ways too. For example, some varieties of wheat grow only where there are cold winters not to mention corn, potatoes, oats, and barley, which also grow better in parts of the world that experience winter. These are staples that feed the world and help prevent famine. But there's actually something even more problematic that could occur if the Earth lost its tilt. Earth could turn into a snowball. Let me explain. Near the poles, it would be constantly below zero degrees. Assuming that snow would still form, then in these areas, there would be permanent snow and it would continue to fall, but never melt. This would cause a large snow buildup, like during the Ice Age. Slow and steady, the polar ice cap would expand away from the poles, and Earth as a whole would begin to freeze. Why is that? There are two main factors which act as a positive feedback loop. Snow is white and reflects the sun very effectively. This means much of the sun's energy would be reflected off the ice caps and the energy and heat from the sun would bounce back into space. So Earth would get colder, and more and more of the sun's heat would be reflected away from the Earth. Secondly, as the ice cap grows in height, the surface would be at higher altitude, with the snow insulating the surface from any heat produced inside the Earth itself. As we all know, as you increase the altitude, the air gets colder, and thus you get a colder surface as the whole surface rises. The polar ice cap would then slowly begin to engulf more and more of the Earth. Would Earth become a complete snowball? Well, probably not. It will likely still be hot enough near the equator to melt the ice and snow. But these discussions have a lot of uncertainties attached. We just know that many things about Earth would be different without seasons. One thing seems clear. For the sake of humanity, we should thank Thea that it gave Earth a nice good kick in the gut four and a half billion years ago. Otherwise, we would certainly not be where we are today, or perhaps not even exist as a species. But we do exist as a species. In fact, a highly intelligent and technically advanced one. One of the great technical advancements of the 21st century is offered by Brilliant.org, today's sponsor. In my view, it's one of the best online learning platforms available. If you want to go deeper into some of the subjects I covered in this video, the course I recommend you check out first is Solar Energy. It's a 21 lesson course 
where you'll learn the physics of harvesting nearly limitless energy from our most renewable source, the sun. The course starts with discussing the anatomy of solar radiation, that is, how it spreads through space. Then it covers the mechanics of solar thermal systems and ends with photovoltaic cells and how sunlight is converted to electricity. What makes Brilliant Lessons so impactful is that they make the learning process fun by presenting each concept in bite-sized chunks using lots of helpful graphics and interactive charts that get you highly engaged. And you end up remembering what you learned long-term. Brilliant has a special offer for Arvin Ash viewers right now. Go to brilliant.org forward slash Arvin Ash to get started for absolutely free for the next 30 days. And if you decide to get a subscription, the first 200 people will get 20% off. You've got nothing to lose, and I think you're gonna like it a lot. Just click the link in the description below to get started. And if you learned something, give us a thumbs up and share this video. I'll see you in the next video, my friend.